Well, the first thing I just thought I would talk about would be yourself, because that's a nice place to start. So I wondered how, because you had mentioned you came here as a tourist first of all, so I wondered yeah. how you became involved in this project. Um, well, at the time, the Scottish Fisheries Museum was looking for uh, a boatyard coordinator. And basically, um, I came up here from Italy, and I was looking for a, for a job, so I just applied to the post and I advertised. It was uh, back in 2015. And I was successful despite my English uh, level. So uh, basically, I think it was 2015, April, I started to work here. So I've been before uh, just once as a tourist. And I was quite impressed with the, the museum and what they yeah. were doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it was definitely a place I was uh, looking forward to, to work for. So you had skills already or was it... Yeah. You'd, you'd worked previously in... Yeah, yeah, basically I did the same work uh, um, on wooden boat, a traditional mm -hmm. wooden boat down in Italy. Uh, but, uh, you know, mm, without entering personal reasons and other stuff like that. But uh, in this country there's a much more attention to the heritage than in Italy, so obviously finding a place like this is much easier here than yeah, in Yeah, that surprised country. me because, yeah, you yeah, know, I given think. like uh, traditional skills are on the decline and that kind of thing and there's not the same uptake and that kind of thing, it really surprised me. And equally, because Italy is so culturally rich, I would Yeah, it I'm is. Well, well, probably we are not really good in uh, taking advantage from uh, the European funds mm. and other yeah, local that's funds, true. you know. Mm. Well, in this country, I, I've seen that it's quite easy to have grants if you if you are focused on the job and if you know what you want to do, it's quite easy to have grants for um, undertaking these kind of activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Why? Why do you feel it's important to, to be in this line of work, to, to do what you do? And yeah, well, I think it's important because uh, nowadays there are just few boatyards uh, which can actually do a restoration yeah, or definitely. repairs on wooden boat. Um, especially on the east coast of Scotland, uh, it's quite difficult. We were looking for uh, a big boatyard uh, which can undertake the restoration of Reaper, which is our flagship. And we could count on, uh, you know, the fingers of one hand, the opportunities in the whole country, and on the east coast, uh, just a uh, really few. Yes. Um, So I think it's important because we have to preserve the heritage, first of all, as a museum, but also, you know, private owners should have a, a, the possibility to go to a good boatyard, uh, which, uh, which can actually do a restoration rather than just repairs or uh, just a rebuilding of a boat, because we, we should try to preserve the original fabric of the vessels as well. And also because it's true that is a, a declining market, uh, is a dying, uh, so uh, yeah, if you want art. But on the other end, uh, once it's gone, it's gone, and we should try to keep a small niche in the market uh, for this wooden vessel. I think. Yeah, yeah, and it's so surprising as well, given like the history of the East Coast. And, you know, it's a, it's a hub of boat building activity, yeah. and, and it's it's I agree, it's sad to to lose these kinds of links and traditions. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, would be, it would be a shame. I think uh, yeah. no, that's really important that at least a small, you know, a small number of people keep going. So yeah. obviously we saw the, the Zulu fishing vessel. Yeah. Um, and I just wondered how the museum came to acquire it. And, yeah. Okay, so the Zulu um, was, uh, I think, she was fishing until late 60s. After that, she has been acquired by a trust in Shetland, 
uh, and they tried to maintain the boat but it was too expensive so they decided uh, to donate the boat to the museum so the boat came down from Shetland uh, to here and she has been in the harbor for a while but obviously the museum was struggling with money for maintaining two big boats the other one is Reaper mm -hmm. um, at some point they did some refurbishment works uh, uh, thanks to Miller Boatyard which was based uh, in Samonas at the time now that boatyard shut down so it's no more an option on the east coast and after that um, the museum realized that uh, the boat couldn't be in the water because there were too many expenses and uh, she was sinking every now and then due to the lack of maintenance so they did a grant application for lifting the boat out of the water and moving her uh, into the collection so the grant arrived uh, in 2000 when they moved the boat inside of the gallery building the roof afterwards and uh, also the, the walls around it uh, so that's uh, how the boat came here at the museum. Yeah, and you've been doing some associated upkeep, um, maintaining its structure. Yeah, the boat basically is losing the shape because uh, it's so ha she has a so heavy structures and also uh, being on you know on the ground is not good for a boat because there's no pressure from the water uh, on the hull, so she tends to widen and lose the shape. So we are uh, trying to stabilize the boat, uh, pushing the side which has lost the shape and adding a few structures and uh, um, wire as well, just to, in order to hold everything together and uh, to prolong the life. Yeah, and that would be yourself and the volunteers? Uh, yeah, exactly. Involved. Yeah, basically it's the boat your staff and uh, the volunteers. Um, we will have also a trainee from um, um, National uh, Historic Ship next year. So um, it's a training scheme for uh, um, giving skills to young people uh, in the field of uh, the national um, heritage of uh, maritime mm -hmm. boats. So basically he is coming here at the Fisheries Museum for doing uh, an experience and he will be for sure involved uh, in the process. That's <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And in terms of the benefit you bring to the community mm -hmm. with these kind of projects, I mean, you've mentioned a few things, but maybe you could... Yeah, so uh, we have volunteers and we got also trainees. And there's also, uh, I think we have a sort of followers uh, in the village here in Astrata. So mm -hmm. the people always come and have a look at what the next project uh, and what boat is uh, under restoration. So that's definitely a benefit uh, for uh, the community. First of all, for uh, the retired volunteers. So they come here every morning, uh, some of them every morning, some of them just one or two mornings uh, every week. And basically they are looking forward uh, to come uh, to have uh, something to do and uh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. to help the museum and our uh, activities. And also for the trainees, now we do not have uh, trainees, but. Uh, this is a particular time uh, of uh, our bootyard uh, department, but in the past we got uh, two run of uh, trainees, a couple of trainees every year, and we train them on the job. Uh, it's quite difficult uh, to have them employed afterwards mm -hmm. here in, within the museum because obviously we have a budget problem, of course. but uh, it would be great if one day we, we can keep some of them uh, you know, as a part of the staff. Yeah, and do you feel tourists uh, as well? Do you feel it brings a bit of an, an added dimension to the tourists? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I think uh, over the summer there are uh, coaches stopping uh, in the parking here and as soon as they get out of the bus they just come here yeah. if, we, if we have the doors open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the first view of the Fisheries Museum and afterwards they, they have a tour around the museum and they see our activities from there. So I think it's a great addition. We have seen also with social media and um, you know the website uh, things, we, we, the things that we put on the website, there's, there's a definitely a big interest on traditional boat building uh, activities. 
So I think it's one of the departments uh, which catch more more the attention of the public and yeah, in general. Yeah, absolutely. I have to confess, if I could come to a museum and I could see, I could see all the exhibits, I could see all the models, and then I could actually come out and see people working on something, it just brings a whole yeah. different dimension to the, the project. It just really brings it to life and makes it personal. Yeah, 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 absolutely. When you... I know that you have some involvement with young people in the community. Is it like a kind of apprenticeship that you do, um, or you have done? Or? Yeah, we have done uh, some, um, uh, thanks to the Coastal Community Grant we got uh, three years ago, we have been able to train uh, two people every year mm -hmm. uh, for one year, following the activities that were uh, going on in the yard at the time. And we haven't done a certificate uh, at the end of the day just because it's quite difficult to fit with the current schemes uh, yeah. like city and guides yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the curriculum and, yeah. yeah you need to have probably a person a part-time person following all the paperwork and uh, also to fit uh, to a course which is supposed to train uh, as a you know boat builder building a new boat it's quite difficult because the most of the time we do restoration rather than new builds, so yeah, the things course. that you can see are different and that's the problem. But in the long term we would like to have our uh, own training scheme and uh, be able to give a piece of paper at the end. Yeah, of course. So you can yeah, prove yeah. that you have done something here and uh, also that you know you have some skills you can spend on the market. Uh, yeah. so do, you, do you find the young people who come in, who become involved, I mean Obviously, they've come of their own volition because they want to learn. Yeah. Um, but do you find they're a bit more hesitant, or does it just kind of depend on the person? Uh, yeah, I think it depends yeah. on the person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, usually, the, the sad, uh, the sad thing is that young people probably, uh, you know, they are busy with the university or they are busy finding a job, so the actual number of volunteers the young volunteers is really really low oh. so we got a trainee who after the training stayed here and uh, did a little bit of volunteering for a while but now he went to the college so uh, we haven't seen him since then so it's quite difficult to have a yeah maintaining exactly yeah but uh, i think it's quite normal because probably the people you know the young people are uh, busy in finding jobs uh, doing other kind of training yeah. or maybe they have families uh, so it's quite difficult to have that kind of focus and that and kind of commitment yeah, definitely. Uh, while a retired person has much more time and they might live locally but here in the East New I think there's uh, probably people from uh, the 20 years old to 35 I think the, the number of people of that age is quite low because they, uh, they go have a, in other places, maybe big cities for finding jobs. Yeah. So that's the problem. Yeah, it's a difficult one because I was I was trying to think, you know, how do you get people, young people, involved in these kinds of things? Because obviously, it's them that you want the skills to go to, yeah. you and it's a. Diff I suppose it needs government involvement, yes. grants, yeah, yeah, you need programs. To, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise, it's yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have seen that um, giving a, like a bursary to the trainees helps a lot because uh, learning the trade is quite difficult and you need to be focused for at least one year for having a basic overview of uh, the whole trade. And, you know, young people who can stay without a salary for one year are quite few. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. A bursary and you know a little bit of salary based probably on the minimum wage is uh, the is I think is necessary yeah. for making sure that they can follow the whole training course. Well, I was going to ask what are the kind of threats to the project, but I suppose we've covered that because it's yeah. Well, there's something additional I think is that uh, this is more for a commercial point of view, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think it's due because of. Uh, the, probably the declining uh, in the number of wooden boats and uh, in the boat here which can actually do the work and also declining number of people who wants to own a wooden boat. Basically, the, if you consider all the money uh, in terms of materials and also the cost of uh, the labor for fixing uh, an old wooden boat, um, 
is not worth from the economical point of view. So let's say that uh, you spend £25,000 for fixing an old wooden boat or for restoring her and you put a her on the market uh, considering also margin, uh, you won't have that money. So that's the main problem, I think, uh, except the training that we covered before. That's the main problem of this trade, mm -hmm. that you have to find a person who falls in love with the boat, so <laughs> is willing to spend yeah. a lot of money yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah. Otherwise, if you, you know, if you aim to have the money that you spend between labor and materials, so you, you struggle to, yeah. to sell the boat. You put uh, the boat on the market uh, to a high price. So that's a big problem, uh, to be honest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's more commercial. Uh, it's nothing to do with the training. Uh, no, no, no. But it, it comes into it. Obviously, yeah. it's everything has to have yeah, yeah. for some reason. Um, so I mean, in terms of your sort of hopes or aspirations for the project, as um, as in further heavier involvement of young people. Or yeah. Well, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I would like to have a young volunteers. Yeah. Um, especially because you know they are more flexible in terms of approach, so they yeah. are used to change in the environment. But the aim would be to to keep going with this because I think uh, just the fact that we are managing to be you know a working boatyard within a museum is a quite good uh, yes, achievement. Absolutely, yeah. And I would like to see more commercial works uh, probably done. Uh, in order to be seen as a, you know, a boatyard which can supply workforce and uh, mm -hmm. also skills and opportunities for uh, the East Coast. Yeah, so absolutely. that's the main aim, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah.